Maintaining a safety improvement process over the long term needs a foundation built on three essential fundamentals, communication, recognition, and leadership. When your safety culture is well established, you can keep the momentum going with energy, enthusiasm, and making the right examples. We call that effective leadership. So who are the leaders in your workplace? There will be several leaders because it's ridiculous to expect one person to do it all. Everyone has to be responsible for safety, for their own and for everyone else's. The leaders among your people will show a constant ambition to achieve. It's up to you to establish goals and give feedback on progress. First of all, leaders communicate effectively. Safety should be something that's always being presented in a positive light, something to be achieved, not accidents to avoid. When leaders do this, everyone is motivated to achieve a shared goal, just like production and service goals. When you make progress, it lets everyone know that the culture works because progress has been made. Effective leaders are positive, open, and honest. Some employees have suspicions that they are being used for hidden purposes, politics, or selfish aims that have nothing to do with their safety. Leaders can eliminate these problems by identifying them, then discussing them openly and honestly. Everyone needs to understand the principles behind your policies, rules, changes, and other interventions to improve safety. What are some of the suspicions harbored by your co-workers? Leaders recognize desired performance. Most people really do care about reducing personal injuries, even to others whom they do not know. When workers believe they have real, actual personal control over causing injuries, they will become motivated to prevent them. They must know they are getting the right training and they must feel empowered to apply that training. You will always have some level of resistance. People who resist whisper negative comments into listening ears because they usually see change as an opportunity to complain and promote bad feelings toward management. Often, a leader's first reaction is discipline, but this can backfire. We want change to come from the bottom up, not from the top down. Discipline can cause more resistance instead of more compliance. Nobody likes a complainer, but why make a martyr out of one? Often, the best way to create compliance is through peer pressure. Supportive, constructive feedback is a strong motivator and an excellent way to reduce at-risk behaviors. Leaders actively support safety processes and procedures and reward those who comply. This ostracizes the resistors and allows peer pressure to occur naturally. Peer pressure and peer support are the most powerful motivators of human behavior. Recognize and support those who are willing and positive about trying the new processes. These few will be the leaders who are easy to spot right away, and they will be the examples for everyone else. They are the ones who need to work with the rest of the crew who will be on the sidelines until they are nudged and encouraged to embrace your safety policies and procedures. So, it is very important to cultivate leadership, communication, and recognition skills among the people in your organization. Encourage these leaders and you will have created a base of champions who will build the support needed for a safer workplace over the long term.